Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the sixth annual end of year ceremony. Uh, for girls who've been with us for a while, they know the setup, but for anyone who's new, again, what is Long Island Girl Talk? Moms and girls know. We are a program designed to train young girls how to create and own and emphasize their voice in their lives as well in media. They create their own television show, which actually airs on Altice and Verizon. This is our sixth install, our sixth year of this program, and it has been an honor. I've been with the program on and off since the beginning, but primarily program coordinator for the last two and a half years, and it's been both an honor and a privilege uh, to be here and to work with our fine ladies. Uh, they've done great work. They, you ladies, are both brilliant and creative and dynamic and uh, you know I'm a little bit sad today because this sadly will be my last year with you for some of you who know I am moving to Arizona in the upcoming weeks so it's going to be a transition for me but I just want to thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you've taught me and you know with that I just want to have a couple of points of advice to give you as we start this program off for today. First and foremost, celebrate yourselves, lady. ladies, right? You are brilliant, right? I just, let's give everyone a hand. We've done really, really tremendous work, and I know it wasn't easy, right? Some of you had to learn what it is to have presence on camera, or what it is to interview, or what it is to be confident in, on, on, in front of a camera, and it's not easy, but it's doable, right? And I hope that you've taken that away from the program, that even if something is scary, even if something is uncomfortable, you are capable. You're capable of more than you know, right? And so that's a part of what we hopefully have given to you, that you can do what you want to do. You just have to be hungry enough for it. You just have to be brave enough to step into it and, and figure it out. So that's one lesson. Secondly, your voice always matters. Now, I know not all of you will end up in media, but for those of you who do, or you go and you're scientists, or lawyers, or doctors, or actresses, whatever you do, remember your voice matters. You always have to be your own best advocate, because the world is not going to speak up for you. You always have to. So, as you've taken from this program, speak up on camera, speak up in your life. Show up in, in your life and be present and be confident and come with a level of determination because what you think, what you feel matters always. All right, so I want you to know that as well. Uh, also, the power of working together. I think what I've really enjoyed the most from this program is seeing you interact with each other and build friendships. And you know, I would have loved to have had something like this as a child because you know, I grew up in a, I grew up in a very isolating environment, and women working t together with women. That's how we soar, right? Women are stronger together. So the fact that you've enjoyed each other's company, the fact that you've, been, you've created something together is very meaningful. I don't even know if you know how meaningful. It really is. And I hope that you take that forward in your career and your life, that finding opportunities to work with your sisters, whether they look like you, don't look like you, have the same background, don't, learn to work together because it's through the power of collaboration that women can truly succeed. Come on in, ladies. And then also, just like, be determined. I think, you know, what I've also enjoyed from this program is seeing you kind of work through uncomfortabilities, right? When you, you're like, I don't know if I can do this. And you do, right? And you just, you just get it done. So just always know that you have to just push past, right? And just, and just get it done. And so with that, I don't want to take up too much more time because I smell the guac and the queso. So y'all know what, what time it is. <laughs> So just thank you for coming. Thank you for being your beautiful, amazing, capable selves. Uh, again, like I said, it's been an honor, and I, I will probably cry because I will miss you. But thank you. honored and so excited to be here. Um, my name is Casey Aaron Clark. I had to add my, my middle name because when I joined the Actors Union, um, there was already a Casey Clark. So I couldn't just be Casey Clark anymore because you can't have the same name. It's like a whole thing. Uh, so I am Casey Aaron Clark, officially. Uh, and I, so when Natasha first sent me the email inviting me to do this, I think I replied in like 30 seconds. Like, yes, totally, I will do this. I was so excited. So that was my first, my first thought was, yes, absolutely. 
Um, my second thought was, uh, oh my gosh, uh, I started researching the organization. And as I looked on your website and I looked at what you guys do, I realized that I would be talking to a room full of people who were way cooler than I ever was when I was your age. <laughs> like, I can say with utmost confidence that all of you are cooler than I was when I was your age. Uh, I was a total nerd. So let's just start with that blanket assumption. Um, and, and I think that what you guys are doing in the organization is just incredible, and I think that you should be super proud of what you've built. Um, all of the, the women who've helped build this, it's astounding, it's beautiful. Um, so my third thought was, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to talk to these people. Because, um, A, I love working with people your age. Um, I work with a lot of them in New York City. A lot of, some of you heard me say this outside, I'm a singing teacher as well as an actor and a speech coach. So I work with a lot of um, people your age. I'm not gonna say kids because it sounds weirdly condescending. I'm people your age. And I also follow a lot of people your age on Twitter. Um, I know, right? Super weird. I told you I'm weird. So, okay, so, so here's what I want to say. Um, Gen Z, or whatever you guys want to call yourself, and hopefully you know, you'll have like a name for this eventually. Um, I think there's a big narrative right now that Gen Z is going to save the world. And, I, and, and I'm going to say two things about this. First of all, I 100% believe that Gen Z is going to save the world. My second belief is that you shouldn't have to. <laughs> and that that's a really, that's like a lot of pressure to put on you. So I would like to issue a blanket apology for the olds for screwing everything up. Um, that said, um, I, I really, really do believe that this generation is uniquely I promise not to use the word woke. You are uniquely, you are uniquely awake. You are, you are, and I'm serious, you're awake to the problems of the world. You are awake to the inequalities of the world. You are awake to the need for justice in the world. You are awake to the unique solutions that are possible. And you see things that none of the olds see. And we need you, we really do need you. So I'm sorry that we need you so much, but also thank you in advance for saving the world. Um, so, so here I am, I am 36 years old. I am from a tiny town in the Midwest. Uh, I'm a professional actor. I am a professional speech coach, I'm a professional singing teacher, uh, and I have a very privileged background, let's just say that out loud. Uh, what on earth makes me qualified to talk to you guys? Um, and that's something that I want to talk to you about, the, the thing of like what makes me qualified to do the thing. Um, I work with some really amazing people. Like, as singing clients, as speech coaching clients, I'll tell you a little bit more about my speech coaching business in a minute, but I work with some of the most, I'm gonna say a bad word, cover your ears, badass women on the planet. They are accomplished, they are intelligent, they are gorgeous. They are the kind of women who like, when they walk in the room and like, if I'm standing in the corner of the room and I see them, I'm like, oh man, I can't talk to her. She's amazing, right? And here's what I want to tell you guys. Here's the secret, and it's a secret that I want everyone in this room to hear, and that secret is that every last one of them has something called imposter syndrome. Have you guys talked about imposter syndrome yet in your, in your practice? Okay, so here's your vocabulary word for the day. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is the thing that happens in your head when somebody asks you to do a thing, or you walk into a room, or you get a new opportunity, and the first thing that your head says is, I can't do that. That's not for me. I don't public speak. I don't be an on, on camera. I don't run lights. I don't do this thing. Does anybody have a voice in your head that tells you that every once in a while? If you're not raising your hand, you're lying. It's okay. You're also eating. You're also eating. It's cool. Um, so, so imposter syndrome is something that never goes away. And we can either take that as 
bad news. Or we can take that as, okay, this is something that's just going to be a constant for the rest of my life. And what these women tell me, these amazing women, what they tell me is, I'm just waiting for someone to see through me. To see, like, oh, she doesn't really know what she's doing. Or, oh, she doesn't belong here. Or whatever, and, like, kick me out of the room. That's what they're all waiting for. Isn't that sad that people think that? No matter how together they look on the outside. So that's part of my mission on this planet, I think, is to tell particularly young women, but really every woman, no matter how old she is, that all of us have that little voice that's telling us that we can't do the thing, right? Um, and, and I want to talk a little bit about that voice. I'm like literally rewriting my speech as I say this, mostly because Natasha already said all of the golden things that I wanted to say. So I'm gonna pull up my notes right now because I wanna to talk to you about fear. Um, so there's an expert named Mary Poffinroth, which every time I hear that name, it makes me think of Hufflepuff. Any Harry Potter fan here? Okay. <laughs> so, um, so there's a lot of like inspirational language in the world that's like, be fearless. Who's heard like, be fearless before, right? Okay. So here's what I want to tell you about the phrase, be fearless. This is what Mary Poppinroth says. Credit to Mary Poppinroth. Telling someone to be fearless is like telling them to be hungerless. Or stop being thirsty. Fear is the price of admission for being a human being on the planet. Fear is your brain doing a brain thing. Everybody, um, look at your thumbnail for a second. Okay, so your thumbnail right here. You have two little things in your brain that are about the size of your thumbnail. They're the shape of an almond, and they're called your amygdala. Have you ever heard amygdala? Has anybody studying brain science? Okay, so your amygdala is like the control center for your fear response. When we talk about being nervous, or we talk about being stressed out, when we talk about fear, they're all the same thing. It's all the same thing happening in your brain, right? So your amygdala senses something in your environment that is scary, and your amygdala goes, warning, 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 and it starts to send all these signals to the rest of your body. It starts to secrete hormones. It starts a physiological reaction. Um, does anybody, when they get nervous, get um, sweaty palms, or like that like clammy feeling on the back of your neck, yeah. or you get sweaty, yeah. or your belly starts to hurt? Yeah. Yes, okay, so here's what I'm gonna tell you about your belly hurting, right? When we get scared, um, our body sends a signal, our amygdala sends a signal to our body that's like, okay, it's go time, right? And go time can look a few different ways. Go time can look like fight, as in, I'm gonna punch the I'm gonna punch the predator and I'm gonna get yeah. Or it can look like <laughs> flight and flight is like I'm out of here. Okay. Or it can look like freeze. Uh huh. So you guys know I'm here in fight, flight, and freeze. You guys know that? Okay, great. Sweet. So here's something that we sometimes don't talk about as much. So there's like a subset of freeze that we've called um, accommodate. Other people are now calling it fawn, which I love because it makes it an F and I love alliteration. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Fawn, or accommodate, is like, if I'm nice to the predator, maybe they won't eat me. If I make the predator feel like awesome about himself, then maybe he won't eat me, right? That's a thing we do, right? Anybody familiar with that? Okay, right? Um, so all of these paths that our brain can take us down cause different things to happen in our body. But what sometimes happens when we start to feel those feelings is that we take it as a sign from the universe. It's a sign from the universe that like, I'm not supposed to do this thing, right? Oh, if I'm nervous about public speaking, that means I'm not supposed to be a public speaker. If I'm nervous about being on camera, which I heard a lot of you say, as I was asking who does stuff, I heard a lot of people say, and I'm not calling anybody out, a lot of people say, oh, I, 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 I would much rather be behind the camera because I get nervous when I'm on the camera. So here's what I want to tell you right now. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I was really nervous this morning. I was nervous last night. 
I was nervous thinking about talking, talking to you guys. I was afraid. I was afraid of messing up. I was afraid of looking like I thought I knew everything. I was afraid of saying the wrong thing. I was afraid of what you guys might think of me. I was afraid, I was nervous. Um, people ask me all the time, how do professional actors not get nervous? And the secret is that we do get nervous. <laughs> if you're not nervous, you might be a sociopath, okay? Again, fear is the price of admission of being a human being. Nerves and fear and the possibility of embarrassment and that cringy thing that happens when you realize that you might mess it up are the price of admission of living an interesting life. Does anybody in this room want to live an interesting life? Cheers, okay. So if we just accept as a blanket assumption that you're gonna be scared, you're gonna be nervous, your, your belly's gonna be uh, doing all the things. Oh, I forgot to tell you why your belly does that. Here's why your belly does that. Because when your brain, all it wants to do is get away from the thing that's not making you safe or fight the thing that's not gonna make you safe, it turns off all your non-essential processes. Uh, digestion is one of those. <laughs> It's like, okay, we don't need to digest the food anymore, so eat, shut it down, right? It also shuts down your prefrontal cortex, um, which is where you have all your logical thoughts. That's why when you're really mad at somebody, you're like, I just, I, 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 and you can't like form coherent words. It's because your prefrontal cortex is off, y'all. It is off, okay? So, fear is your brain doing a brain thing. And sometimes in order to get to the other side of that fear, you just have to do a few things. I'm gonna give you a couple things to do. Um, the first one is breathe. I know, how many of you guys have ever been stressed out and somebody's like, you look stressed out, take a deep breath. And you wanna be like, I hate you. <laughs> Does anybody have that reaction? Okay. So, it sounds a little condescending when somebody's like, take a deep breath. But it works. So can everybody, because I'm nervous right now and I need to take a deep breath, can you guys all take a deep breath with me? Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's what I want to tell you about how to take a deep breath. 99.9% um, .9 of the people on this planet are breathing wrong. Yep. Yep. Ugh, what? I didn't even know I could breathe wrong. You can breathe wrong. Okay, so here's what, it, here's what it sometimes looks like. Sometimes when I ask people to take a deep breath, here's what they do, they go. We call that um, work hard breath, or my partner Julie calls it panic attack breath. <laughs> it all happens up here, it's like all the shoulders and stuff. Um, the other thing that I see uh, is somebody who's like, I've been to a lot of yoga class, I know how this works, and they're like, <gasps> and they do belly breath. You guys probably, probably have heard about the benefits of belly breath. So I'm not here to make fun of belly breath. Belly breath is really useful. Belly breath is really useful when you're super relaxed. Like when you're in yoga class and like your chakras are open, <laughs> when you're in choir and you're having fun, right? Like when you're relaxed, belly breath is great. But expanding your belly more doesn't give you any more air because your lungs aren't down there, <laughs> right? So like that action that's happening in your belly is not air. It's just your kind of innards getting displaced by the downward action of your diaphragm, kind of like if I smush the balloon, it would go out, right? So that's what belly breath is. So here's the thing about belly breath. As soon as that fear response or that stress response kicks in, the last thing in the world that your body wants you to do is release your soft bits to predators. <laughs> it literally thinks that the predator is gonna come along and be like, Psh, you're dead. Right? So okay, so we can't get our belly breath when we're stressed out. So if it's not our shoulders and it's not our and it's not our belly, where do we breathe? Does anybody know? The diaphragm is definitely part of it. Yes. So the diaphragm, when you breathe in, goes down. When you breathe in, and it comes up. When you breathe out, it is mostly an involuntary muscle, um, which means you don't have to think about it to make it work. It's just going to do its job. But here's a place that most people don't know about for breathing. And I'm gonna set the microphone down and I'm gonna speak loud for a second. Don't roll. Don't roll! <laughs> okay. It's here. It's your rib cage. Mm. If I bisected your body in half like this, 
60% of your lung tissue is in the back of your body. Really? Most of us right now kind of think of ourselves as existing in selfie land, right? <laughs> we're like right here and we're like here forward, okay? You are a 360 degree human. You have, you have sides and a back. I know, we laugh, but sometimes we forget, right? So, your rib cage is designed very beautifully to swing apart and come back together. Your shoulder blades will swing apart and come back together. And you don't have to release your belly for your ribs to move. So do me a favor, find your ribs for me. Just like right, right where, yeah, just right under your armpits. It's cool. Um, and then just give me a deep breath into your ribs. Your shoulders don't have to move. Your belly might move a little bit, but it doesn't need to. How does that feel? Does it feel good? You know how to feel good. It's a really relaxing way of breathing. I already feel better, I already feel less nervous. So here's what doesn't help with fear. What doesn't help with nerves and what doesn't help with fear is trying not to feel them. Everything's fine, I'm totally fine. Doesn't help, doesn't help. Um, denying your feelings is only gonna, it's kinda like, so feelings are like waves, right? Um, if you try to build a wall in front of a wave, and eventually that wave is gonna like knock the wall down because waves are more powerful than walls, right? Um, However, you can learn to surf your feelings. And then they'll just crest, and they'll just go like this. So here's my recommendation for you. When you feel nervous, when you feel scared, when you feel angry, when you feel overwhelmed, acknowledge it to yourself. You don't have to say it out loud unless that's helpful. Unless you're in a safe place and you can tell somebody. I felt like I was safe enough here to tell you that I'm nervous. But rather than being like, I'm not nervous, everything's fine. It is much more helpful for me when I say, oh, I'm feeling nervous right now. Okay, cool. Well, that's not everything I'm feeling. I'm also feeling excited. I'm also feeling honored. I'm also feeling interested and curious about the people in front of me. All of these things exist in my body at the same time. If I let the nerves be the whole story, then I'm never gonna show up in the world in the way that I want to. So that's my lecture about nerves <laughs> and my lecture about fear.